Hi everyone, I'm Brian Demers from Okta, and in this video, I'm gonna give you a quick overview of Pesetto, and then jump into how to create and parse Pesetto tokens in Java. Let's get started. First up, what is Pesetto? So Pesetto is platform agnostic security tokens. So when I say Pesetto tokens, it's kind of like me saying pin number. I'm sorry, I'm gonna keep doing it. But you can find more about the spec at Pesetto.io. But in a nutshell, a Pesetto token is just a way to encode JSON data uh, and transfer it securely between two parties. So if this sounds a lot like JWTs, you, you're right on the money, it's, it's very similar. The format is different, so much so that the tagline for Pesetto.io is everything you love about Jose without any of the main design defects that plague the Jose standards. So to give you a quick overview of the format, Pesetto token is broken up into basically three or four main parts. You have the version, the purpose, the payload, and an optional footer at the end. So if you look at this bottom option, you can see I have a V1, so version one, public token, and then there's some base64 encoded data associated with that. And I like to think about the purpose first. There are two purpose options. So one is local, so those are encrypted tokens. So you can only view them locally if you have uh, a secret key. In public, these are tokens that are transferred in the clear, but has a cryptographic signature associated with them. So you can verify the contents. First bit was the version, and this allows the format to change over time based on our cryptographic needs. So currently there are two versions. So V1 is more of a compatibility mode. This is used for systems that don't have the latest cryptographic primitives. And V2 is a recommended option, the strongest crypto, but not all crypto libraries currently support what is needed. But library support is getting better all the time. I've been working on a Pesetto library for Java named JPesetto. This project is a direct port of JJWT, which is an excellent library for parsing and creating JWTs. So if you need to parse those, I'd strongly recommend that library. So I'm gonna build an example. I'm gonna create a token, then I'm gonna parse the token. So I'm gonna create an encrypted one. So we're gonna need a secret key. So we'll call it secret key. And Pesetto provides a keys utility for you to generate random keys. Now, if you were using your own application, you'd obviously wanna persist this key somehow so you could use it on each end that's transferring the token. Uh, maybe pull it out of a configuration somehow. Um, but for examples and unit test, generating a key is fine. So I just need to make sure I use the same key when I encrypt and decrypt the token. Next, I'm gonna create an instant to represent the current time called now. And then I'm gonna start building my token. So we'll say Pesetos, and I'm gonna use the V2 local token, again, for encryption, and I'm gonna say builder. So this will create a builder, which has a nice fluent API. So I'm gonna first set the secret key. So the shared secret is the secret key that I have. And then I'm gonna set the issued at time to now, and then the expiration to an hour from now. And as you might have guessed, the Pesetto spec has registered claims much like JWT claims. So issued at, expiration, not before, audience, issuer, and various other ones. So I'm also going to set an audience to this video. And I'm gonna set a custom claim called 1D20. And we'll assign a random value to that. So between one and 20, so new random. Next int 20 plus one will give us a value. And then I'm gonna call compact to take this token that I'm building and compress it into a string. We'll call the string token. So now I'm gonna log the token to prove that it works. And then let's run this little example. There we go. So as you can see, this created a V2 local token and this base64 coded data is actually the encrypted bits uh, 
turned into a string. Now that we have a token, let's parse the token. So we'll take this string and we'll parse it. So we'll create a parser. So again, Pesetto's parser builder. So this will create an instance of a parser that we can then use multiple times. Uh, in my example, obviously I'm only gonna use it once, but if you were building a web app, you could use the same instance over and over again. So Pesetto builder, and I need to set the same shared secret to the secret key. And then let's say build. So this will create a Pesetto parser, we'll call parser. And that's all there is to it. Now to use the token, we just say parser, parse, pass in the string version of the token, and we get back a Pesetto, which we will call results. Now we can print the claims. So the claims again are just attributes, the JSON attributes. So we can say log, claims, salt.getClaims. This will print basically the map version of the claims. There we go. So we can see we have a couple claims, but if you wanted to access a single claim, you could access the audience claim, the named method. So we'll say result.getClaims.getAudience just the same as we set it above. And to get our custom claims, works it similar. We could say 1d20 is result.getClaims.get. So we can either use get and get an object back, or we can say the claim name, which is 1d20. And we can say we want an integer. Whoops, an integer. And this will return the integer value. So we run this again. You see the audience is this video and we rolled an eight. You can also push the validation of claims into the parser itself. So if we go back to the parser, we can say require, oops, require audience. And we can ensure that the audience is this video. If we run this, of course, this will pass because we can see the video is set right here. But if we change this to other video, this will fail with an exception. There we go. Expected the audience claim to be other video, but was this video. So we'll fix that again. And we could also do this for our custom claims, but we can say require 1d20 is a value of 20. So this isn't likely to happen, obviously, um, but you can also do a custom predicate here. You see value, uh, and the value of a parsed integer, or a, sorry, parsed number will be a long by default. So you can see value is greater than 10. So we have a 50-50 shot here. And if we run this again, we'll see that it failed. So we roll the three, if we run this again, it passed, so we rolled an 11 this time. That's it for this video. Definitely check out the Jay Pacetto project on GitHub. The link will be in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button and the subscribe button. We have videos coming out weekly and you don't wanna miss the next one. Thank you.